Hey, how y'all doing there? It's Doug from Fleet's Wood Shop in Houston. Hope y'all are having a great day. We're going to go ahead and make some little mermaid night lights. So let's get going. I'm going to be doing this in a two-part video, and I'll explain why. We're going to be pouring these inside of PVC, 4-inch PVC pipe. So we need four wooden inserts that will fit in the bottom of them, which is roughly 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. All right, we're going to be pouring these in 4-inch PVC pipe. So we need four wooden bases that will fit inside the bottom of them, roughly 3 and 7 eighths inch. So we'll just place them down there. And draw our circles. There we go, we got all five cut out now, so we're going to head over to the sander. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put some blue tape around it, so that when I pour that quarter inch of resin on there, it'll stay in place. Tape's worked fine before, so I'm pretty sure it'll work fine again. I'm letting about a half inch of tape stick up a little more than I need. It'll make two passes, make sure it's stiff, and you don't want to pull it too tight. If you do, that'll cause uh, wrinkles or waves in your tape, and you don't want that. There we go. Check it up, bend the tape over on the bottom, and flatten it out. Bum, 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 bum. All right, let me do four more of these, and we'll have them ready to pour. All right, Armor Light Slow is my resin of choice, and you have to pour that in equal volumes by weight, so that's why I'm using a scale. You've probably seen that done many times before. Not critical they be dead on accurate, but as accurate as you can get them. There we go. We get it mixed up. Ran out of my high-tech paddles to attach to the drill. So good old star stick will do the job in this case. I use these over and over. Just let the previous resin dry hard on it and go at it again with the stick. You want to start this till you see no coloration streaks, white streaks or anything following behind your star stick. Scrape your sides real good. Make sure you got it all stirred up real nice. There we go. One. Uh, two. Uh, three. Four. And number five. There we go guys, we're going to put those in the pressure pot here in just a minute, and let them cook. You know something I'm going to use? Alright, I'm building a little dam by the way, These shelves just moved out of the way, that's what you call just in case.
Then I'm going to take it up to 80 pounds. And there we go. Now we'll wait, get it out in a bit. All right, there we go. Got it up at 80 pounds. We're going to let it sit overnight. Then we'll come back and take them out and smooth off the edges, get them inserted and decorated up, and then put into the PVC. And I'll show you all how that's going to go. Okay, we took the tape off of all five of them. Hey guys, all these supplies you see here can be gotten at your local craft store, the glass beads and the little colorful seashells and the pretty ladies. These are actually made for a fish tank. These are, I don't really know what they were made for. I would might almost think a Christmas ornament. And uh, again, you don't have to have a band saw and turn a piece of wood and sand it down and go through all that trouble if you don't have the tools and the equipment to do it with you can get small round pieces of wood from the craft stores and again I get them from Hobby Lobby I bought these to be able to show you guys and you don't have to have PVC jigs because you can do it with a plastic cup or a plastic container. I drilled a hole in the bottom of this one. You also don't need to have the big giant bottles of a Alumalite because they also sell it in small portions. This one I believe is around $24 from Hobby Lobby and you do not need a scale to mix this. It's a 50-50 pour and you have a much longer open time which means if you don't have a pressure pot you can pour it in slowly and hit it with the heat gun as you're pouring it and get all the bubbles out that you think you can or as much as you can the uh, mole could be inserted into the bottom of the jug once you have it decorated glued in with the heat a, a glue gun so you get no leaks then you pour in from the top you're clear if you're gonna hit this with a heat gun if you were there for a while it'll melt the plastic so put a funnel above it and so you can direct the heat coming out of the bottom of the funnel and it will get most of the bubbles out for you ideally you want a pressure pot if you're gonna use a little piece of wood from uh, from the hobby store you can even use a plastic cup I didn't drill a hole in the bottom of this one or cut the bottom off if I was going to use this I would just chop the bottom off the piece of wood will seat and you can seal it with the glue gun after you've decorated it of course and then again put your resin in and, and work it with the heat gun as you're pouring it to get all the bubbles out. So just wanted you to know this can be done without having a pressure pot set up and a compressor and buying these big jugs of resin and big band, band saws and all that stuff. If you got it, great. If you don't, you can find a way to do it without it. Believe me, it'll work.
Okay, guys, here we go. All four are coated with their blue base on the bottom. Need to let them dry now, overnight. Then we'll get them set up to get cast in the resin. Pretty little ladies in the wood shop. Alright, let's put our little ladies in a mold. I don't know if y'all were able to see it before, but I wanted you to know, in my PVC sleeves, I have a cut. It makes it a little easier to get them out of the mold when they get done. I also line the inside of the molds, and I'll show you that in just a second here. Alrighty, what I'm going to use, guys, to coat the inside of the PVC pipe with... This is just a ver basically a commercial version of Pam oven spray. You can use, uh, there's products made for releasing the resin out of a mold, but this stuff is dirt cheap. Like I say, it's basically Pam oven spray. And I'm just going to coat the inside of the PVC with it and then smear it around with a rag. And it's not going to do any damage to the resin at all. I've done it many times. And it works great. So. There we go. Now we got the blue tape is what I'm going to use to seal the bottom of the PVC with. And I'll finish taping it up, but now I'm going to have it all in its mold. I'll finish taping it up. Then I'm also, because of the split that I have in the PVC, going to tape around the piece of pipe. I've always just done it twice, and that's been plenty good. Now I'll finish taping up the bottom. And I've got two other little ladies to get done. Three, actually. So I'll go ahead and get those in the pipes off camera. Then we'll go ahead and get some resin mixed up. Alrighty, guys. Got them all taped up and ready for the resin. Got the little ladies sitting in there. So we're going to go ahead and get some resin mixed up now. Let's go ahead and mix up our resin. There we go, we're in the pressure pot now. Gonna seal it up, pump it up to about 80 pounds of pressure, and we will be good to go. All right, I'm gonna start taking these out of the mold. It takes a little while peeling back all the tape, and the epoxy tends to come out of the bottom and stick to the tape. So you gotta do a little bit of work to get it off the bottom. And it takes a while, and honestly, it's kind of boring to watch, and I don't want to bore you guys. All right, when I'm getting them out of the mold, y'all might be able to see this. I have a cut. I slice the PVC beforehand on the band saw, which allows me to pry it open fairly easy. Now we can just pop it out of there. Now 
And yes, the molds are reusable. Hello. There we go. Gonna look a lot better when it gets polished up. Came out real nice otherwise. Show y'all one of the other ones. Like I say, when they get polished up, oh my gosh. And you might note I put this piece of wood on the bottom just so I could pour that first section that I showed you. That's where I'll turn it off the lathe. That's why I poured that little extra spot of clear. So let me finish getting them unmolded, guys. Okay, guys, we got them out of the mold, all demolded. Sitting here on the counter and looking pretty. One of them had a quarter inch notch out of the side of the epoxy where an air bubble got trapped. So I had to come back and build a coffer dam on top of it and pour a little more resin. And I used one of my drill press pipe drilling jigs to support it. It happens to the best of us. You got to do repairs now and then. Hey y'all, I just want to take and give a quick shout out real quick. Uh, there's a few guys out there on, on YouTube who really just inspire me. Jake with Northside is uh, very good, very entertaining, very informative. Really like watching him. Doug with the Poe Barn, very funny guy. Keeps you entertained throughout the whole video. Nick with Unwaffled. Uh, Nick, again, is hilarious, wonderful fellow to watch, keeps you entertained, teaches you a lot, real great guy. Zach with Woodweirds does a great job. Great job, Zach. John with the Builder, John's hilarious also, keeps you entertained, teaches you, even cooks lunch. So y'all check them out. I'll leave a link in the comment section down below. So y'all could uh, find them and check them out there. Great and entertaining to watch. Thanks now.